called the Yogini split. There are a few variations of this move, as there are many pole moves, as there'll be one name and a few variations. There's this one, and there's this one. We're going to be focusing on this one, okay? I will definitely show you the segue of how you get into that other one, but here's why I'm choosing this, this first one. It's less painful, okay? So with this one, I love the fact that you can keep your hand there. You don't feel like you're ripping open your internal organs, and you can still hit a pretty shape without really giving up on life itself. Versus the second variation with the second foot grab, ugh, it just, <sighs> yeah, trust me. Anyways, if you are glutton for punishment, we will definitely touch on how to get into that. This is a good gateway to get into that second one as well. So let's talk about our contact points for this one. We're going to be starting either from a pole sit or from a climb. Either way, it depends on which you prefer, how committed you are to it, as in like confident you are getting into it. Okay, I find from a pole sit, it's a little easier to go step by step into it versus from a climb. Um, it kind of all, everything has to happen at once. Okay, so your first few times you may want to try it from a climb, but if for some reason the climb isn't working for you and you find that, or I'm sorry, you find the pulse it is not working for you, feel free to try the climb version. There's not much difference in that. Okay, so contact points, really big one is the back of that armpit. Okay, whichever side you want to go into. Okay, so we're going to be going from a pole sit or a climb, which means that the pole is going to be kind of between our legs. Whichever side of the pole that you're leaning away from or to, which however you want to think of it, that inside arm is going to be swimming back and really squeezing. If it's down here, you're actually going to have less contact point. So you want to think about trying to raise your arm up as much as you can. It's not about flexibility. It's about tension. Okay, so don't worry about if your shoulders are not very flexible and you're like, um, my arm does not go that high. It's about keeping tension. It's the fact that if you're here, your muscles might not be fully engaged and it's not locking you into the pole as much versus if you're trying to pull that arm up, it's actually engaging more in that tricep back there and those extender muscles that is just going to lock you in a bit more. Okay, that same arm is going to be grabbing the same side leg. Okay, on that note, as far as hitting this line, um, this is a very active split, okay? As much as it looks like that bottom leg is just dangling, there's definitely some compression, some hip flexor strength on that. Likewise, this back leg, here's something to think about. And anyone who's trained any flexibility or done any of my flexibility tutorials or online training programs has probably heard me say this before. Your arms are shorter than your legs. <laughs> so, which means if you grab your toe here, that leg will never go straight because my arm is fully extended, my leg needs to go farther, okay? If that's all the flexibility you have right now, great, work with where you're at. But if you're doing this move and you're like, why can't I get my back leg straight? It's probably because you need to start scooting that hand farther and farther down your leg, okay? So when I'm first trying out a move, I'm not worried about it being flexy. Your first number one goal is don't die. Test the move out, see how it feels. Don't worry about it being the best split ever. Just focus on finding your contact points, seeing what's going on. And then if you feel comfortable and you want the move to go a little bit farther, then we start adding flexibility. So if you get to that point, then your goal is to start working that hand farther and farther down your leg so that you can fully extend into it and get that leg extended, okay? So we're gonna go from a pulse sit or from a climb. Like I said, it's up to you, whichever you prefer. But I do find from the pulse sit, you can add a little bit more of an incremental release versus if you're doing it from a climb, you're kind of all in, okay? Um, definitely, of course, always start this one nice and low initially. So if for some reason that hold is not as you know tidy as you'd like it to be, you're not very far from the floor. Um, this move works on spin or static, doesn't matter, whichever you prefer. This is one that works great on static because you can just line it up and be right there, but it also works great on spin. That being said, it doesn't matter which direction you spin. You can be spinning forwards, you can be spinning backwards. It's not gonna make or break the move, okay? So we're gonna go from a sit and we're gonna find our first contact holds. Taking it up to the sit, I'm leaning to the side. Whichever side I'm leaning, that is my bottom hand on the pole. I'm gonna take my inside hand, reach forward and circle it back. So I have that contact point back there in the back of my armpit. You can bend this bottom leg if you want to for a little bit more stability security, it's up to you. Then we're going to bend, remember, same leg as arm, grab that leg and kick it back. Remember what I said about really engaging those muscles? If that feels okay, 
you can extend that front leg. If you don't want to, it still makes a really pretty shape right here. And then to come out, you return to that pull sit. Okay, so contact points. Right back here, that hand, of course, and I'm going in a true grip. I'm fully wrapping my thumb, but personal preference, if you prefer the cup grip on this, that's totally fine too. And then of course you have this, which now takes us to the other variation of this move. This contact point is there, but it's not as much of a primary. Like as we release that bottom leg, we sink into it a little bit and we definitely feel it, but it doesn't make us wanna give up on life. If we're taking it to the other version, well, that's a whole different story. So if this version feels good to you and you're like, oh yeah, it's solid, I love this, it's a good kind of pain, and you wanna take it to that additional foot grab, you want to make sure that this is solid first, and then this inside or bottom hand, sorry, it's not really an inside hand, outside hand, is going to grab that other leg and extend it, okay? So I will say this variation can take a little bit more hamstring flexibility because that leg is coming up a little bit higher. It also can take a little bit more hip flexor engagement because if you just extend your leg straight and you don't have that strength to bring it up, it's hard to grab onto, okay? So just a little bit more involved, but it's nice to have options on shapes. Another note on doing this other variation. I do find if I fully go into this first one and this hand is nice and high here, it's hard to get this hand off. So if I'm already planning to grab that other leg, I start with this hand lower down, more at my hips or my waist, because then it's much easier to free this hand to go into it, okay? <sighs> okay, I'm gonna do the other one, only because I love y'all, but I want you to know this one hurts me. Taking it to our sit. My hand is down closer to my hips. Bring that leg back. Kick your leg back into it. And grab. Oof. And come out so you can lick your ones. Oh. Yeah, not my favorite. Okay, couple of little things here. If you're finding yourself sliding down with either variation of this move, the hand and the leg that are grabbing on that first side, those are your primary contact points. What this other hand and leg are doing, those are your secondary, okay? Which means these, if you just grab your leg right here and you curl in, you're not getting that contact point all the way. So if you feel yourself sliding, think about trying to kick your leg into your hand. So it's a lot of booty engagement on that. Kick your leg into your hand and in doing that, It'll squeeze this arm in and increase this contact point. It also, by engaging your glutes, pushes this hip into the pull and also increases that contact point as well, regardless of which variation, okay? So if you are feeling yourself slipping, you have to go against everything that your body instinctually wants to do, which is curl up in a ball and die, and instead kick your foot into your hand. Think of lifting your chest, look up, very important where your eyes go, your body's gonna fall up, okay, to go into it. So this one is a yogini split. You have a few different variations here. You do not need to have a split with it. It can just be a yogini variation. It can be a yogini split, either variation of it, whichever you prefer based on your flexibility, your preferences, the other combo things that you're putting together with it. So play around with it, see what works best for you, have some fun with it. If you are working on getting that split line, either one of them, and you're finding that your flexibility is not quite where you want it to be, Okay. Number one, what I always tell people is if your flexibility is not looking like a good split up there, my first question is, how does it look on the floor? If you don't have a split on the floor, it's only going to be harder up there. Okay. My next question usually is, how often do you stretch? Okay. Flexibility is built by consistency and proper technique. Okay. So if you're thinking, well, I have been stretching, but it hasn't gotten better. Well, the next question is, what are you doing for stretching? Maybe you're not doing the correct active flexibility exercises, which, which is what we need. Passive flexibility doesn't always cross over to what we're doing up here. Okay. And if you're not sure what the difference is between active and passive flexibility, and you want to learn how to increase your flexibility for those pole moves or in general life, I would highly recommend checking out my online flexibility program, EB Fit Flexibility Tutorial Training Program. It's a 12 month program where we break down vertical splits, center splits, back bends, all kinds of bendy things, and working on taking your flexibility from the floor to pole or aerial. So if you have questions on that, of course, send it my way. I would love to see how your yogini split comes out. 
hashtag Elizabeth B. Fit let me, made me do it. Not let me do it, made me do it. And <laughs> let me know how it goes. Have some fun with this one. Mm-hmm.